now we will move on to the next speaker, uh, who is um, Dr. Patricia Farsi. Uh, she is uh, the head of the hepatic pathogenesis section, the laboratory of infectious diseases at NIH. So, uh, Patricia. Uh, is she not on? No. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's good. Okay. So, good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you, Orana. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Peter, Anna, and all the organizing committee for inviting me to discuss uh, the biomarkers of liver cancer, which is an important topic uh, because HCC still remains one of the most important challenges for the scientific community. So uh, I'm just trying to move my, okay. So HCC is the sixth most common cancer and third leading cause of cancer-related death worldwide. It is more common in men, and the prognosis is poor in all regions of the world. As a result, incidence and mortality rates are roughly equivalent. The median survival of patients with early HCC can achieve five years and more, but less than one year when detected at an advanced stage. Unfortunately, most HCC cases are detected at late stages and not when the tumor is localized and treatment options are more effective. However, less than 20% of at risk patients receive surveillance and the current strategy have limited sensitivity and specificity for early HCC detection. Now, viral hepatitis, alcohol and NAFL are the major causes of a progressive liver fibrosis, leading to cirrhosis and its long-term complications, liver decompensation and HCC. Now, cirrhosis is the single most important risk factor for HCC, being present in more than 80% of the cases. And about one third of cirrhotic patients will develop HCC during their lifetime. HBV, as you can see, is the leading cause of HCC world, worldwide, and with HCV accounts for 71% of the cases, although there has been a risk reduction, but not elimination with the antiviral therapy. Now, since the adult patients with cirrhosis are at the highest risk for developing HCC, Surveillance is critical to detect HCC at an early stage, implement the treatment options, and increase patient survival. High risk populations recommended for HCC surveillance include cirrhosis of an etiology, Asian male hepatitis B carriers over age 40, as well as Asian female over age 50, Africans and African Americans with chronic hepatitis B over age 20, and hepatitis B carriers with a family history of HCC. Now, the two cornerstones for HCC surveillance are serum biomarkers and imaging. And today I will focus my talk on the serum biomarkers. Let me start with the definition of cancer biomarkers according to the NCI. Biomarkers are molecules detected in the blood, urine, or other body fluids that indicate the presence of cancer or predict the risk of cancer development. Ideally, biomarkers should allow early detection of cancer by screening healthy or high-risk population, help to confirm the diagnosis, or identify a specific type of cancer, predict the prognosis, monitor treatment response and detect early recurrence. However, the discovery and validation of a biomarker is complex and requires five phases prior to the routine use in clinical practice. So it's a very long process. As you can see, phase one, preclinical exploratory studies, clinical assay and validation, retrospective longitudinal studies, 
prospective screening, and finally, cancer control study, which should assess the impact of screening on reducing the disease burden in the targeted population. Now, this slide shows a list of serum biomarkers that are either developed or under development. Only alpha fetoprotein shown here has completed all the five phase, and lectin reactive alpha fetoprotein or AFPL3 and this gamma carboxy prothrombin or DCP are between phase two and three. As you can see, the majority of biomarkers are in phase two and the list is continuously expanding. And then there is a promising group that includes genetic and cellular biomarkers collectively defined as liquid biopsy that are in the early stage of clinical validation. And now let's start with alpha fetoprotein, which is the best characterized and most widely used serum biomarker for HCC surveillance. However, not all HCC secrete alpha fetoprotein. Now, while there is little debate that alpha fetoprotein should not be used alone in HCC surveillance, there is great debate on whether alpha fetoprotein should be included in HCC surveillance due to its suboptimal sensitivity and specificity. However, most studies show a benefit of the combination of alpha fetoprotein with ultrasound in HCC surveillance. Now, as a consequence of this ongoing debate, there are key differences between major professional society guidelines. As you can see, while ultrasound every six months is the standard test endorsed by all the professional societies, there are discordant recommendations about the value of adding alpha fetoprotein or other biomarkers. As you can see, the American Association recommends ultrasound every six months with or without alpha fetoprotein. The APALS recommends ultrasound every six months with alpha fetoprotein. And the Japanese Society of Hepatology, the ultrasound every six months plus uh, three biomarkers. However, the ISLO association dates ultrasound alone. Now, we need to point out that outside of expert centers, there are several limitations also for the ultrasound. Its sensitivity for detecting HCC at an early stage is highly variable, ranging from 21 to 80%. And the reason is because it is highly operator dependent based on skill of the sonographer, and it is influenced by patient characteristics, including obesity, which is very important, especially because it's increasing the number, liver nodularity, and ascites. On the other hand, various factors may influence the performance of alpha fetoprotein, including patient demographics, etiology of, liver of underlying liver disease, severity of liver disease, chronic hepatitis, the presence of cirrhosis, and the values of ALT, antiviral treatment, and this is a very important point, tumor stage and tumor biology. So what is the best strategy for early HCC detection? In a recent paper published in gastroenterology by the group of Amit Singhal, Meta-analysis of 32 studies comprising over 13,000 patients compared the performance of ultrasound alone versus ultrasound plus alpha fetoprotein for the early detection of HCC in patients with cirrhosis. The authors found that ultrasound alone detected early stage HCC with a sensitivity of 45% compared to 63% when ultrasound was combined with alpha fetoprotein. Now, the improved sensitivity was associated with a light decrease in specificity. So the author concluded that the addition of alpha fetoprotein to ultrasound significantly increases the sensitivity of early HCC detection, 
suggesting that this may be the preferred surveillance strategy for patients with cirrhosis. Now, several strategies have been used to improve the performance of alpha fetoprotein. Most of the study have tested alpha fetoprotein at single time point instead of longitudinal analysis. Also, attempts have been made to tailoring the cutoff according to liver disease etiology, severity, and antiviral treatment. So in this study, Lee et al. demonstrated that longitudinal determinations of alpha, of alpha fetoprotein, along with patient-specific risk factors, indicated here are a history model, can improve the accuracy of HCC detection compared to a single determination as no history, shown here as no history model. And subsequent study confirmed the utility of serial determination. And I think that the longitudinal analysis makes sense because even in the clinical practice, we never use only one ALT determination, only one HPV DNA or HCV RNA. So this study, in a recent phase three biomarker study, longitudinal assessment of three serum biomarkers, AFP, AFPL3, and DCP and their combinations was evaluated for the early detection of HCC in prospectively collected longitudinal sample. This was a next case control study in which serum was analyzed at zero, six and 12 months prior to the diagnosis of HCC in 42 cases and 168 match controls. The majority was chronically infected with HBV, all were virally suppressed, and the majority, 85%, had undetectable serum HBV DNA. The majority also had normal ALT levels, cirrhosis, and 74% had very early stage of HCC. Now, this slide shows the results of the trend of the three biomarkers in HCC and controls between minus 12 months, minus six and zero, which is the time of HCC diagnosis. As you can see, in HCC case, the mean alpha fetoprotein was almost unchanged from minus 12 to minus six, but then it increased significantly at the time of HCC diagnosis, whereas it did not change in controls. A similar pattern was of observed for AFPL3 and DCP, where there are no changes in the controls. Now, at the time of HCC diagnosis, using the best cutoff calculated for alpha fetoprotein, which is five nanogram per mil, the highest AUC value was reached with the combination of alpha fetoprotein plus AFPL3. 0.83 compared to any single biomarker, AFP, AFPL3, and DCP. Now, although a limitation of the study was the low number of incident cases, the sensitivity of ultrasound alone was only 48.6%, a value similar to that reported in the recent meta-analysis study by Singal Group, which was 45%. As you can see, the addition of alpha fetoprotein to ultrasound increased the sensitivity to 88.6%, and the further addition of AFPL3 to a remarkable 94.3%. The specificity was higher in the ultrasound alone than in the combination. Now, given the high heterogeneity of HCC and also the fact that HCC is unique in that arises in a cirrhotic liver, so in a liver that, is, that has a disease in contrast to all the other cancer, there is increasing recognition that a combination of biomarkers might have been necessary to improve the sensitivity of the early detection of HCC. The GALAD score 
which is one of the best studied, includes gender, age, AFPL3, AFP, and DCP. These slides show the results just for the early HCC with a sensitivity of 80.2%, 82.1% in the UK and Japanese cohort, and a high specificity, 89.7, 81.6. And the AUC was very high in both, 0.93 and 0.91. Now, as you can see, the Gallad model shown in red improved the rock curves compared to the individual biomarkers. Now, the Gallup score was also recently validated in the United States for the early detection of HCC. And remarkably, it was shown to perform well in each subgroup of patients with different etiologies, HCV, red, alcohol, non-viral, alcohol, and HBV, which seems to perform the best with 0.94. In the same study, the addition of ultrasound to Galad, the Galadu score, further enhanced the performance, although the clinical benefit remains to be established because this was a single center study performed at the Mayo Clinic. Now, studies are underway to evaluate the performance of Galadus versus Galad in comparison to ultrasound alone in a larger multi-center phase three biomarker study in the United States. And now I'd like to conclude with a snapshot of what the future holds for the diagnosis of HCC. One of the most promising development is the area that is generally referred to as liquid biopsy, which includes the genetic and cellular biomarkers. And this group comprises circulating tumor cells or CTC, cell-free circulating tumor DNA or ctDNA, and the circulating short macroRNA and long non-coding RNA associated with extracellular vesicle or ECV. Now, this is a rapidly evolving area, but at present, all of these technology are still in the early stage of development. So, in summary, the addition of alpha fetoprotein to ultrasound imaging significantly improves the early detection of HCC, although the results are still suboptimal. Longitudinal determinations of AFP appears to increase the sensitivity and specificity for HCC surveillance. So additional study are necessary to establish the best cutoff values for alpha fetoprotein and other biomarkers for HCC surveillance. In HBV suppressed patients with minimal, with minimal hepatic inflammation, and this is valid also for patients with hepatitis C that clear the virus. Given the high degree of heterogeneity of HCC, which is one of the cancer that has the most uh, uh, genetic heterogeneity also within the same tumor, combination of alpha fetoprotein with other biomarkers and clinical parameters appears to improve the sensitivity and specificity of surveillance for the early detection of HCC. Now, the recent expansion of the landscape of HCC biomarkers holds promise for the future may pave the way for tailoring surveillance using a personalized approach based on individual risk factor, which, was, which would be the best in the case of uh, patients with cirrhosis. And with my slides, I'd like to thank all of you for your attention. Uh, thank you, so, Dr. Farsi. This was uh, very interesting and informative. Uh, there are a number of questions, but we are falling behind time-wise. Um, so I would uh, appreciate if you could address the questions directly. Thank you so much. It was a very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh,